string. One thing I've noticed with this Daphne racing and Andre and Ellen, you, 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 don't, you don't force the horses. I mean, you've got five-year-olds and then you have five or six months. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, Mrs. Patton doesn't like really running uh, the two-year-olds. She likes to give them a chance to mature and, uh, you know, let them see, have a bit of longevity in their careers. And uh, you can see some of horses are six and seven and they're, they're still running, you know, they're running well. They're, they're Well, we're back at our favourite venue, which is uh, the Sommerfeld Clubhouse at Sommerfeld Training Centre, where we've urged you, the public and the punter and the racing enthusiasts, to come up with your family and enjoy this fabulous venue. And uh, it's going to start getting cold soon because we're, uh, well, personally, thankfully, heading into winter. I don't do well in the heat. And uh, come up to Sommerfeld uh, uh, Training Centre and enjoy a lovely morning here with the horses. But it gives me great pleasure, always guests first, to talk to a gentleman of the game. And uh, he may not like compliments. And you're always deemed to be blowing smoke up people's um, Foundation. foundations when uh, you give compliments. But uh, it's almost like compliments and being nice are not the right thing to do. But he is a gentleman of the turf, he's a gentleman of the game, and he's a true friend of racing. So our guest today is Byron Foster who is the assistant trainer to the Andre Nell team here in KwaZulu-Natal, and we're looking forward to our next half an hour. Byron, how are you? Thanks, Warren. Thanks for having me. Thanks for those kind words. Absolute pleasure. Andrew, Absolute thanks pleasure. for having me. Nice blowing smoke. Then. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and uh, if, I think if everybody in the world blew a bit more smoke, it would be a happier I place. I see blowing smoke up my water for the... Were they? The Were they? Good. That was the last podcast. Oh, he's worried about my haircut. Oh no, that wasn't blowing smoke. That was just <laughs> yeah. He was just being facetious. Um, but uh, I'm sure they've removed those comments because we don't tolerate comments like that. Um, because um, as I said, if we could all be nicer, the world would be a far better place. Now, Byron's with us, and um, yeah, just to learn about him and a few things. Uh, let's talk about. But before we talk about you saying go, going back to the going back to the old to the uh, previous podcast, good. I'm glad that you got a compliment or, or, because you deserve it. You deserve it. You served the industry for forty odd years, and uh, we we like it. Time I retired. No, no, no. We don't want that. But let's go to Byron and talk about. Uh, I want to start differently. I want to find out about your family. I always ask everybody about how they got into racing, but family is also hugely important. You had a young family. Talk to us about your your wife and kids and. How many of them? And sure. Um, yeah, I'm married to Kelly. Uh, we've been married now 14 years. And uh, we've got a, two sons, a 12-year-old and an 8-year-old. Yeah, they keep us active with all their extra murals these days and getting them off to their games and that. Yeah, so very active family. We like going out and whether it's sport or, or running or cycling. Do, do you get chance, Byron? Do you get chance to go to the sports games? And, I mean, when you're busy schedule, do you able to able to get in there and watch and support as much as you can? Yeah, we try to get out there as much as, as we can and get on the side and, and give them the old cheer and that, um, like I say, with Sunday racing and, and it can jeopardize a few things, but uh, yeah, we try, like with my eldest son, we try to get out and do a cycle before racing on, on a Sunday and obviously time management is, is difficult. But uh, yeah, obviously thanks to my wife, she, she does a lot of the, the errands and whether, you know, she's school early in the morning like every mom and uh, yeah. she's getting around and yeah. So. It's important for, for parents to be close to their kids when they're growing up. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, you blink and they're 18 and they're out of, out of house. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and both you gentlemen say that, you know, you, you've obviously got kids of your own. I haven't got kids of my own. I have stepchildren, but you certainly make them your own. Um, and, and I haven't been with them in their whole growing up phase, but Candice has always said to me, you know, your kids and my sister as well, they're young for not long and they really grow up. And you've just said they're 18 before you can blink. Yeah. Well, one of ours is already 18 and out of school and into university. Yeah. And uh, you looked at the photos from just the other day and they were in school uniform. Yeah, so know. they certainly do grow up quickly, do the children. Now, you've got two sons who come to the races as often as they can. Um, 
and, and they seem to have a, a, a sparkle in their eye when they're around horses. Should we be worried? Should we be, uh, is there a chance there could be a trainer or a jockey on the horizon? I don't think jockey or trainer. They, they do love the game. They always got the race car when I bring the race car home at night and they'll go through it and then they know their colours and especially the jockeys, the style of the riders and that. Yes. So they, they've picked up things very quickly and uh, obviously of influence of the, the TV being on with racing nine times out of ten. <laughs> it sounds bad. I think they're going to be uh, punters. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think, uh, we need those too. Probably going that way. Yeah, we but, need those uh, too. Yeah, no, there's definitely a, an interest there. Um, okay, well, that's look, good. I would never push them towards being a jockey or a, a trainer. And that's, yes. it, you know, they must find their own feet and, and what direction they want to go. We'll always uh, support them. But um, yeah, there's definitely an interest there. Obviously, living on the farm, obviously, they always got the opportunity to come to stables and, and look at the horses and they got their favourites and that's... Uh, <laughs> and yeah. do they, Byron, they come to the yard, they walk around... The, the, yeah, they do come out uh, most afternoons and that when they, there's a bit of time or, or gap, um, they'll come down and, and have a look and have a look at their, their, their pet, as we say, and uh, yeah, they've got their favourites and that. And like okay. I say, they, they enjoy coming to the course and, and getting up close to, like, like myself when I was young and just enjoying the game. And, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Then... Um, how did you hear about this beautiful game? Let's go back to, to, you know, when it all started. I mean, how did you hear about horses racing? Were you born into the racing industry? Yeah, I think uh, definitely influenced my, by my parents, my dad. Um, he was, like I said, a victim to racing. He loved having a small punt, small punter, but uh, he loved the game. And so there's always a race car lying around at home. And um, uh, probably on my mom's side of the family also, she's, very big family so all my uncles were always interested in racing um, one worked as a bookmaker and um, yeah so there was always bras and that there were, you know, back in the day there wasn't racing on TV so we would okay. always have the radio there and uh, listening to the commentary back on what was it uh, Port Natal I yeah Port Natal yeah. that's right he used to play that little jingle before what did he yeah, that little jingle little and, 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 little, yeah the trumpet yeah and, that, and yeah. then you used to they would yeah also living in the in the totes you know Again, the uh, cell phones and that, you would, it wasn't around, so you would go down to the totes with my dad and quickly get his PA on, we would watch the first leg and maybe run to the other wall, they used to have the little like commentary yeah, speakers, speakers on the wall there, yeah. tape racing, Transvaal racing, listen to the first leg of the PA, know that he's in, shoot back home and spend the afternoon, but uh, yeah, those, yeah. Brings back Jeez, memory yeah, those days. Absolutely. Well, those were the days, I mean, when you used to go to the race course, it was, it was like a family. I mean, there were a lot of people there, they, yeah. and, and it, was a, it was a great afternoon out. Yeah, yeah I know, uh, my dad also, he, he used to tell me stories. He, he was from Montclair. I think everyone yeah. in, in that region, they were bred into yeah, racing. Yeah, they, school, they, yeah. they went to school, went racing, or listened to racing, or did work, and there was racing yeah. bred into them, the DNA for them. And, uh, so he knew Paul and uh, Paul Lafferty and look, there's a lot of guys. I think Shane Humby, uh, Dave Laverack, Mervyn okay. Hopeflesh, they're all from that era. So my dad was always friends with them. We went to school together, New Forest. So that, uh, so there was definitely an influence from, from my dad. And okay. uh, yeah. Yes, and then uh, your, your, well, before we talk about your first job then, but you're just talking about punters and you were saying your, your old man was a small punter and you say you occasionally have a bet and if you do, it's a big, it's, it's not a big one, it's a small bet. You know, you, you bump into people and you and you, you know they'll say, well, you know, I'm a that oak's a big punter or that lady's a small punter. I don't know why we have to justify whether you're a big punter or a small punter. Yeah. You know, each person is to their own, and it's also about what you can financially afford. Well, it's nice um, just to have an interest. In absolutely, yeah. I think and, and it's an enjoyment too. You know, or yeah, excitement. Absolutely. Having a, you know, even if you had six rand and and that was one, you can see he's got the biggest thrill as the guy that's had a thousand rand absolutely. on a horse. Absolutely, sense of achievement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Find a winner. winner. And, yeah. And, yeah, and you say, well, I've turned my six yeah. rand into twenty six rand or whatever yeah. it may be. I've turned my and, and, you know, also you have people at the races, oh, there's money around for this horse, who's backed it, you know? I mean, it's, it's an open betting market. It's, an, uh, it's like having a special on baked beans and, you, you know, you walk into the spa and there's no more baked beans. Yeah, sure. you know, they aren't special, they've been sold. Yeah. The price was 10 to 1, it's now 2 to 1. It's been bought, the horse has yeah. been backed, you know, it's, it's an open market. So, yeah, punters, uh, whether you're a six-rand punter, some betting platforms, you can have one rand on a horse uh, or you can have a million rand on a horse. Uh, and uh, all punters are, are, are needed and respected. But going back to your first job, who was it with Paul Lafferty Racing? 
Yeah, Paul. Paul got. Uh, well, my dad. He, he was play. He was uh, playing over 35 football at that stage, and uh, he was obviously good mates with Laf. And uh, he said to Laf, "I was. Uh, is there space? Is there chance I can maybe uh, give me a chance and, and start off?" And um, yeah, so Laf said, "I remember. Forget. Make sure he has wheels, and he can he can have the job and start." And uh, yeah, so I managed to quickly came out of school, got my license. And then uh, ended up with LAF. This is a month trial and see how I enjoyed it. And I thoroughly enjoyed it, you know. From being the outside, you know, back in the day, growing up, we weren't allowed on the course as a teenager. Or I think maybe about 13 or 12 we were allowed to go onto the course. So those first 12 years, my dad would always take us racing. We'd have to watch from the infield. Or well, he would run in and take his bets. But infield, we, we used to watch the races. So, you know, it was, it was difficult. But now, suddenly coming to check in the morning and, uh, you, you know, you, yeah, you're seeing these guys from the other side of the fence. You know, those days, Jeff Lloyd and Robbie Fred and all these good riders were here. Now, suddenly, you're working with them. So, it was quite an excitement. And like yes. a, a jaw drop for the first, like, three months. And I could say to my dad, hey, Jeff Lloyd came and took a horse this morning. Hey, and then my dad... Also, a small pony, he'll get excited, you know. Yeah. Hey, what's he riding? This and that. So, like a different aspect. But yeah. obviously, then that tail ta tapered off, and then you had to put in the, the mileage. And uh, obviously, worked with uh, Busewa, he's still there. And uh, he had, um, I think it was Lucy back in the day. So, I worked with her and uh, learned the ropes through them. And uh, yeah, so you know, obviously, very grateful that LAF gave me the opportunity to start because I think it's probably. 20, 25 years ago, it was probably difficult to get into the game. Yes. This day with social media. Well, it's actually quite interesting for Barra that he, he went straight from, from school into into training. Most people get start off with the bank or yeah. to return. Or so you didn't go and do, like me, I mean, I never went to university at all. So you went straight from school into, into work. Yeah. yeah well, look, I was playing good level cricket and uh, just things weren't going at that stage in the country and that so I ended up veering off and, and taking a chance at uh, racing. That was my second biggest thing in, in my life at that stage. So yeah, my, my mom had tried to organize me a few uh, bookkeep oh, bookkeeping, but just uh, filing jobs at, at work. So, but also again, we used to make sure I had my radio on a Wednesday to make sure I can listen to the commentaries and, and stuff like that. But uh, quickly put a few files away, probably in the wrong, wrong order. I don't know when the, when the commentaries are on, but uh, yeah. So once I had my wheels and that, and uh, yeah, it all started with that. You must have been one of the longest serving, or still are, on, uh, you were with left for how many years? I was just left 11 and a half years. 11 and a half years. Yeah. So, I mean, there's not many assistants that are, have been, you know, that have held assistant jobs for so long. Um, and, and, and the fact that you, that you were able to keep going for 11 years and, and show job security and job enjoyment, job satisfaction, etc. Um, and then from, well, I mean, it must have been a, a laugh a minute, as, as they call him. I mean, working with him, he doesn't get offended. You can call him an absolute hooligan. He's a comedian of the highest order. And it's just so nice to see his stable firing at the moment. He struck up a great partnership with John Finlayson and they're turning out the winners. He's got some lovely juveniles and uh, he's transparent. He lets the public know about the, their chances. Uh, but he is an absolute madman. Uh, I mean, he's a prankster. He's just a yeah. happy go lucky, full of beans. I mean, that, that may, he must have caught you on a few occasions, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. You, you don't want laugh. Laugh never makes tea. But if he makes you tea, you've got to make sure that there's no salt or something poured into that <laughs> cup. Because there would always be a joke or a prank. And, uh, yes, yes. Yeah, no. Uh, like you say laughs. There was obviously times when work time and Absolutely. then and, uh, enjoyment time. But when the owners were there and there would always be the brow and, and his, at his bar there and his functions and that, you know, they, they did enjoy their, their parties and that. But uh, like I say, work and, and enjoyment time, there was definitely a clear line. But uh, yeah, no, it was, it was great. Obviously, like I say, the opportunity he gave me was, I can only be thankful for. I spent 18 months in the army with Lef. Yeah. So and you, know, you know all his tricks. <laughs> all at once, we really. <laughs> For uh, doing something nice into the Oaks beer. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, but, but, uh, and also, as Byron said, uh, there was a lady called Lucy who worked for them sometime, but Vasiwe, who's Vasiwe certainly. Been, been, well, well, he's been on our Ashburton. podcast. It wasn't that wonderful yeah, yeah, yeah. we had him on our podcast. Well, since the Ashburton days, that's a, a gentleman. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you just can't say enough about how great he is. Yeah. And, and no, he's a, a proper horseman. He knows his. 
everything about horses and you know he's very yeah. thorough yeah. I think he yeah. still tells me he gets up at three o'clock yeah. in the morning and does his temperatures and his rounds and that yeah. so he's been yeah. dedicated yeah. for all these years yeah. and absolutely. Uh, yeah, I think he's a big asset to that. Absolutely and, and a big asset to the horse racing industry as well but yeah we see we're a great great man. This man when you used to work for that um, I remember the gallops at Summerhill you used to sit halfway down the down track. The track. Yeah. Why? I think it just get a better reflection of the action. Sometimes they, you know, probably a better, you know, maybe they're tiring at the end of their work. Yeah. Um, so you can just see it a little bit better. I always used to yeah. see you sitting there all by yourself on yeah. a bale of hay. And yeah. No, I was just, wondering. No, just to see the action a little bit better at that okay. stage of the, of the work. You know, okay. just something different than rather being at the finish. Okay. Um, and then Byron, did you go uh, straight from Paul's to Andre Nell's team, Mrs. Platner's team? Yeah, um, we tr at that stage we had a string that we would travel for the summer months with Laf down to Cape Town. So I, I always chat to, that stage Yogis was working for Brett, um, Brett Crawford, and he was obviously training for Mrs. Platner. So we would always have tea at the races um, during those periods of, of uh, the season. And then obviously there was a changeover between Brett and, and Yogis and then Yogis there was a big shift and change around with, uh, with, the, with the team and uh, Yogis said to me if you would be interested there's a job available at Futura Farm here, yeah. Mrs. Platner's set up, would you be interested? So uh, at that stage I'd just been married and it was more, it, I, no disgruntled or laugh or anything like that, it was just a pure career move and uh, I said yeah let me see what it's about. And yeah, so then we ended up uh, doing the dive and, and moving across to, to Yogis at that stage. Um, yep, and you've been now with the Platinum team for how many years? Uh, well, it'll be 13. Just got married, so I must be about 14. Yeah, 13, but I had a year where I went down to PE. I worked for uh, Marcus Joester. Okay. Um, sadly, Peter Miller had passed away. He had, was in the process of setting up the PE yard. And, and then Anton Marcus approached me and said, would you be interested in taking over from Peter? Um, I remember that now that you mentioned that, yeah. So we off, off we went to Pretoria for an interview with Marcus and uh, John uh, Costa and they liked what they, what they saw and so we ended up going there for, a, it was probably about nearly a year, it was about 11, 11 and a half months. And, but things weren't going to, it was a lot of um, structure that, they had really in place there in uh, Pumalela at uh, what was it Fairview at that stage. So getting changing it for, into my name through boxes, there was obviously a waiting list. So the, the process was just being dragged on. So and at that stage, things happen. Um, Yogis phoned me again, and he said to me, "The job's available in Durban again if you're interested." And uh, so we packed up and ended up coming back. And so. So we had a, about a year and a half with Mrs. Platner and then okay. another 12 and a half. Okay. So the point I'm making is that, you know, when you talk to people and you say, well, I worked here for a year and a half and I went to the so and so for two years, I went to so and there for three years, I went there for one year, job hopping. Uh, but uh, it's kudos to, to Byron and, you know, for, for the service that he, he gives his, his, his team and, and yeah, you know, longevity of, yeah. of jobs. And I mean, you can be proud of that because, you know, you've really had two massive jobs year-wise. One for LAF, one for the Platners. Yes, a little bit of a break in between. But I mean, that's, I mean, that's impressive uh, that you, you, you're there to stay sort of thing. Yeah, I think I've just been very fortunate huh? and uh, maybe my character just knuckling down and, and getting on with it and um, yeah, taking the opportunity and uh, yeah. Any, uh, any thought of one day maybe going on your own or, or I mean uh, maybe that's a silly question because you may have done that already um, but yeah, yeah well, talk to us about that. Yeah, I think when you get into the game and you start as an assistant you always have the aspirations to be a trainer. I think uh, currently you probably have to be pretty brave to, to go out there on your own now the way the the financial yeah. situation is and obviously there's things happening in the game that you probably want to just take your, your foot off the pedal and just have a look at things and but yeah I think down the line uh, if there's, there's opportunity arises and 
they did, you got to yeah, take I, it. I remember um, Craig Udy, I mean, he worked for Alistair Gordon for over 20 years. And I said to him, why don't you go on your own? Yeah. He said, rather, rather let the boss have a worry about finances and yeah. well, there's staff all those, and all that. He said, I'm, I'm quite happy with yeah, I am. I think people forget about all the little stresses that are, yeah. that you just sit. At, at the race course, but that trainer's got to feel uh, obviously a lot of questions after when horses don't perform, and you know, then you've got your feed companies and everything else added on, and yeah, so it is, it is a stressful game. And uh, like I say, if there was an abundance of owners out there, I, th I think the, it'll probably be easier for people putting their hand up and saying, Yeah, I'm gonna have a go at this and, and go out there and train, but uh, I think at the moment, you've got to be realistic and, and look at how things are and let it just play out a little bit before rushing into it. What is, uh, you know, I'm sure with, with having the two yards, one in the Cape, one in KZN, there's still obviously policies, procedures uh, that need to be followed. I mean, it's a business. Uh, yes, uh, you know, these big owners do it for the enjoyment or whatever the case may be, but you've still got to balance your books, run your accounts, etc., etc. So that falls under you as well. You'd probably work with a central accountant or a central, you know, team or whatever it is but I mean you, you, you you've got to get involved in that you've got policies yeah. procedures to yeah, follow sure. to run the business yeah 100% um, like you say we can't go splashing out on everything and um, yeah we've got our structure obviously Mrs. Platner has her structure how she likes it being done and uh, obviously I communicate with uh, Andre about obviously horses and, and things that maybe needed it for the farm and uh, yeah everything is structured eh? it's very well run and uh, very professional Lauren how do you how do you share out your horses? I mean, Andre obviously got to say what he sends to you. Um, is it because it's weaker here or because you've got the poly track? Which yeah, I think a poly like? track has been a big influence. Big obviously, influence. He, can, he starts starts him off uh, and you can see maybe that also with, with the action that it might suit the poly or horses that are obviously are struggling a bit that maybe in, in their place a little bit. Um, uh, also, the weather in Cape Town in the winter, obviously, maybe horses won't react on, or act on, on the softer Soft, ground. Yeah. So there's the option of the poly, and uh, yeah, and obviously season horses, horses if, if there is horses that has the ability to compete in some of the features, they'll come up. So we like you say, it depends. We, we we have a float. We might come up with a full float. You might come up with three or four. But it just really depends on, on our string and our, the depth of the string. The one thing I've noticed with it was Platinum racing and Andre Nell and Yang, you you don't. You don't force the horses. I mean, you've got five-year-olds, and then you have five or six months. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, Mrs. Platon doesn't like really running uh, the two-year-olds. She likes to give them a chance to mature and, uh, you know, let them see, have a bit of longevity in their careers. And uh, you can see some of the horses are six and seven, and they, they're still running, you yeah. know, they're running well. They're, they're, they're consistent. Well, that's the there's no pressure like that. Yeah, no, there's a big help. I think, uh, you know, some guys want success very quickly, and... Uh, but Mrs. Platner, obviously, she, she, she wants to see that longevity in her horses. And Where did uh, she come from in racing? I mean, it's, it's new. I think at first... from that a big owner is so yeah. sort of forgiving and things like that. They, I think they, her and her husband, I stand to be correct, yeah. but I think her and her husband came out early in the 90s. And uh, I think she started with Eric Sands. And then from Eric, she moved across to, to Chris Nath. And had obviously uh, some good horses. Um, what was her name? That uh, Shepherd's Moon. Yeah, Shepherd's Moon. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think that yeah. put her on the map, and then it just snowballed from there. And then obviously she's gone through her, her trainers along the way. But um, yeah, she. I thought she had a good grounding in the game. Yeah, yeah. it helped. And also too, yes, Andre and, and her trainers that have trained 98% of her string. She's always still had. A, a horse with Justin Snaith or a horse here and one or two in PE and which is good that she you know she's yeah. she, yes she's got her main trainer but she's not opposed to having one with yeah. somebody else or to race with a friend yeah, or I think, uh, Mr. Platner and uh, Tina her daughter had a good relationship with Chris and, and the Snaith family so they've always had their, a few one or two horses yes. with them yeah yes. so that's how it's worked where is the stud uh, uh, we had so George George yeah, yeah. Oh, the Edmund Tell used to run at home. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But hang on, get me. Oh, the stud, the, the, the La Plaisance. Now, you see, clever question. I've learned something. Are you saying the stud La Plaisance yeah, is a George? The stud and George. Yeah. And then our racing facilities up the West Coast. 
No, nah, can you believe it? Uh, I mean, it just shows you, eh? You learn every day. Day. Few, uh, Come on, I don't even be nasty, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, it's, it's a bit slow, but... Uh, well, the young man told you, Steve. I mean, okay. I thought the, tra the training establishment and the stud farm were in the same place up the West Coast. No, two Miles separate, apart. Yeah, two separate two entities. Jeez, okay, yeah. I didn't, okay, I didn't yeah. realise. And is it just because it worked out that way, or is the training establishment not uh, big enough, or did she want them separate? Or? I don't know how the correct order went, but I presume that the the training facilities and then it went over across to the I think the snow is still interesting. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Those horses went to Snaith and all those people and then she started that place okay. as it was. That's really yeah. interesting. Fresh snow, then so the, stud, the studs in George, okay, that's interesting because fan courts obviously... They, yeah, that's they, just down the road. Down yes. the road. So yeah, that's, that's her facility. That's her facility. Yeah, yeah. Court, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've never been. Have you been? I'm sure you must yeah, have. Yeah, we've had yeah. a few meetings there, yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately not. <laughs> <laughs> but talking about, I'm glad you mentioned the, 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 the West Coast and, and, and the training establishment because on, on a recent holiday, and I fully respect and fully understand, it's a business, a tightly run business. And I phoned um, um, Callum Dixon, um, and we'll talk about the team in a moment. And, and I said, we're sort of just about to pass by. It was a bit late and, and things hadn't gone according to plan during the day. And he said, well, we'd love to have you at the farm and, and love to show you around. But unfortunately, it is after hours and, and there's, you know, which I, you respect and you understand. But it was, I was so close because we, we eventually we drove past the entrance. I was yes. so close, but yet so far. But I've seen Google videos, etc. Byron, uh, there are places around South Africa that are really top-notch establishments. Uh, but it's Platinum Racing's time to shine. It's their podcast. That training center Whew. it's it's i think it's it's one it must be one of the leading ones uh, in the country or not the world because it's, it's unbelievable yeah i think uh, andre's very blessed he's got everything on his doorstep he's got the ocean on the one side he's got his training tracks he's got his walkers so beautiful you know out and uh, away from city and city life and that so so the horses have got a great environment to thrive on and um, yeah it's beautiful beautiful setup because yeah, you've also got the natural sand to uh, yeah. yeah and yeah. the facility yeah i mean i know you use summer felt uh, training center but your facility here yeah, too is not as great as the one on the west coast yeah. but it's still magnificent yeah, got, yeah obviously paddock Paddock time for the horses is a, a big help. Uh, we've got lots of paddocks, um, swimming pool, swimming pool uh, the treadmill, and that. So yeah, it's, it's obviously very th grateful to Miss Platform for giving us those those entity or those things to, to use and utilize. And uh, yeah, it's, it's very beneficial for the horses. Now you also talk about we mentioned earlier on about different punters and different human beings and. You know, owners and, and Mrs. Platner's her stance and approach towards owning horses is different to maybe, you know, you may say, well, I, I want a quick return. I want a, a two-year-old to come early, and you know, I might say, well, I'm not so fussy. You know, everyone's different. Everyone's situation is different, and you know, we don't. We, we're not saying that an owner that wants a horse to come quickly to get a quick return is wrong. That's just the way he likes to do things. And as you say, Mrs. Platner's give the horse the time it needs, and. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 it's everyone's different and, and every horse is different too. Talking about the two centres where you operate from, the team. You guys have got a phenomenal team. I, I know in Durban here, Rahil, our colleague who is a wonderful youngster who continues to learn and thrive in the industry, uh, is very fond of Myron and, and, uh, and Colin. He speaks very highly of you both. And it's normal because, you know, you're warm to certain people, you get on with certain people. Yeah, because you're nice to him, that's why. Uh, Absolutely. Um, niceness breeds niceness, you're quite right. But he always talks highly of the Platinum team and, and he talks highly of, of most teams. But Colin's story uh, is used to be, there was a jockey called Colin Story. And when I said, what's your assistant's name? And they said, Colin Story. I said, no, no, don't talk nonsense. What's the assistant's name? So he's got the same name as the jockey that was here in South Africa. Really, I was, uh, <laughs> Didn't you know that? <laughs> yeah. See, now you learned something yeah, new learned today. Something too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Put on a story. bit of weight and grain and <laughs> a couple of inches. <laughs> but your team, great. And down in the Cape, Callum and, and everybody. Tell us about the team because I don't want to miss anybody out. I mean, you don't have to go through them all, but the main role players. Yeah, like you say, obviously Andre heads up the team that side and uh, with Callum and, uh, and Alfred. Alfred was with yeah, me here. Right. Alfred, yeah. And uh, he moved down to Cape Town and uh, yeah, 
Yeah, I think they've got a fantastic team. Um, obviously, Callum is obviously an asset because he can ride work, and obviously, it's difficult, I think, for Andre to get jockeys out up the West Coast. Sure. They don't probably come out as much as uh, as what we have at Summerfelt. So, having Callum on horses is a big asset. And, uh, and then obviously here yeah, I've got our head boys Brasik and Tom. They've been out with us uh, well, since I've started, so they've been uh, with the Platinus for a very long time. And then obviously Colin has joined us. He's been with us about two years now. And uh, yeah, he's also learning. He, he was uh, more into his polo cross and, and that side of the horse um, side of things. But uh, he's, he's now grasping everything about racing. And uh, he also he loves the game. And uh, yeah, he's also a big asset. You head up the team here in KZN and, and you don't give yourself enough credit because you can see that your demeanor, your attitude, you are chilled, you relaxed and, and you sort of go with the flow. But I mean, and, and that's good because the horses pick up on that, you know, they, they like calmness around them. Uh, but I'm sure there can be times where there's a bit of pressure or you get a little aggravated. We're all humans, we, we yeah. all, you know, but I yeah, mean, most all, times you seem to be chilled. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think inside I'm upset. Uh, I might not show it, but yeah, we go to the races, we obviously want to have success, we want to have winners, that's what we get up in the morning to do. And, uh, you know, when things go wrong in a race, you know, as much as we can scream and shout as a, at a jockey, it's happened. The result's up, the number's up, we can't do anything about it. So. Yeah, I maybe take it inside of me and just uh, uh, beat myself up a little bit. But uh, my wife knows when I come home, she says I have a bad day at the office. As you can see, but uh, close the door. <laughs> no, not one of those. But um, yeah, like I say, we all we all want to all want to have success. Sure, but sure. Uh, you know, some people like to vent it. I'm, I'm all in my shell and just take it on yeah. the chin. And but yeah, but mostly, yeah, I mean, it's safe to say Byron's uh, calm, you know, I'm the opposite to Byron. I mean, I'm agitated, I'm loud, I'm, I'm nervy, you know, and I'd say then yeah. that's what makes us, you just unconscious, you just yeah. walk around barefoot and go to the game reserve and enjoy yourself. So everyone's different, but... Why do you get stressed? Who yeah. said we stressed? There's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing you can do about it. It's happened. Yeah, yeah like good I say, point. If I'm in big races, you obviously have those nerves and that. You know, yes. Some people, like you say, show differently in that. Yes. But like you say, well, you've done all the work. It's now up to the job to put the horse in the right place and to make the right decisions for you. And yeah. It's out of your hands, unfortunately. Uh, do you shout your horses home on the grandstand? Do you get a bit of a bellow in? Yeah, not as loud as you. <laughs> but yeah, there's always, like I said, it's that excitement. Yeah. Back, back yeah. to your six rand punters or your thousand rand punters. Yeah. I don't, I generally, if I have a bet, I end up stopping them and uh, <laughs> no luck. But uh, yeah, I obviously enjoy a bit of a shout. I must tell you a quick little story. You talk about you having a bet, you normally stop them. I don't know if I believe. I am a little superstitious. Watch that black cat over there. It doesn't go past the table. <laughs> but uh, I am a little superstitious. But somebody called me aside, and one of my cousins actually said, you know, you and your bloody superstitions, I want you to do me a favor. Here's the TV. Carry on. You're going to have your bet. You stand there and you say, you know, go, go, and you say, turn here, go in, push it, right, must win, and you're going mad. It means nothing. I said, what do you mean it means nothing? He said, I want you to do, do a favor. If you get beat, I'll refund you your stake, but I want you to shout at the TV in the closing stages, get beat, get beat, get beat. You know, I said, come on, anyway, because I'm a nutter and he's a nutter, we tried it. Just Bob, get beat, get beat, get one hard hell to, you know, he said, that, me, uh, yeah. don't be superstitious, he yeah. proved his point. <laughs> I didn't do it again because I went back to just being normal, but uh, that's the thing is, you know, you shout and scream and, and you say you put your, your 10 rand on or your 100 rand or whatever it is and, and you stop them, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, we, we naughty with our superstitions. Um, I want to talk about a horse called Airways Law. Um, and I'm just, we can't go through the whole string, but he came and, you know, and he, he did well and he developed and he, and he sort of achieved and, and ran in the Hollywood Bets Durban July. Uh, I think it was then the Vodacom Durban July, but we know it now as the Hollywood Bets Durban July. Uh, where is he? What happened to him? He, he went off a bit, but um, did he have issues? Uh, yeah, he, he did well. He obviously, I think he ran his race of his life in the July. Yes. And um, yeah, it was... He went down to Cape Town, we had visions of, of, of the Mets, but unfortunately he tweaked a muscle and uh, yeah, he was just never the same horse. He, he, he was always uh, reluctant to, to put it in. Uh, at home he would show good work and we had physios and everything, but I think just, it just didn't click for him. He came, okay. came to race day and it, it wasn't the, the old airways. Yes, yes. Um, 
But uh, Colin, he does our rehoming. He found a beautiful home up in Joburg for him, and uh, uh, from the pictures and that, he's living a lovely life, which is which is what Mrs. Plata always wants. You know, a nice home for them to to to, to move on to, and uh, I think he's going to have a, a good life. Good life uh, yeah. He'll probably end up, I think, showing and uh, doing a bit of jumping at some stage. But uh, the facilities where he is at is, is beautiful. Okay. Byron, are there any uh, horses that you know of? I know it's a little early, but the way time flies, that are coming up for the champion season, South Africa's champion season, KZN's champion season, or, you know, that we can look forward to seeing in the, in the province? I think, uh, I think Andre was going to uh, set up, um, or make up his list uh, in the next few days, and that's what he's going to send up. We probably don't have much, but probably the standout will probably be the Philly Saki. She was uh, unlucky last season in the Guineas, uh, a bit of interference at the wrong stage of her race in the, in the Guineas. And then uh, she ran second to Bless My Stars, who, had, who ran a cracker in the July. So, yeah, she, she unfortunately uh, missed out on, the, on her goal race, the Paddock Stakes. Um, so, I think she'll probably be the, the leading light for us. So, okay, okay. Yeah, well, not lead. a bad light, leading light to have. Yeah. We um, can go on and on for hours, but um, we're not finished just yet, but uh, we're going to go, Andrew and I, into a bit of a news section and uh, stay with us, be with us, and sure. we'll go through a bit of news and feel free to contribute because uh, you know what's going on in the industry. But uh, let's start off and talk about KZN's champion season. Before you can blink again, it's going to be upon us. I mean, that's, it's a good time of the year, isn't it? Yeah, well... The Joburg season finishes at the end of the hour. Yeah. It's not far away. Yeah. yeah so, 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 yeah, champion season on our doorstep. Talking about Joburg this past weekend, some phenomenal racing and some phenomenal achievements. Uh, Robin Clarsen, her first Group 1 winner. Um, Mark Kahn, his first winner as a trainer. I mean, what a start for a trainer. I mean, Mark's a horseman of the highest order. First runner, I mean, you can't write scripts like yeah. that. Yeah, he's been associated with such good horses in his, in his career. And, uh, I saw, read the article, Yard Arm, and uh, yeah, he's just... He wrote some top horses. Top, top horses. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, he, he knows his way around horses. So, yeah, I wish him luck and hopefully he has all the success. He's got the gift of the gab, too, which helps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna, as a trainer, you're going to be good at everything. You're going to be good at marketing. You know the story. So he has well dressed with a suit and everything. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Bag absolutely. <laughs> so, so, bag of fruit, yeah. So, well done to, to Robin Klaas and well done to Mark Kahn uh, on his first well, winner. How did Wes the Feta win? Yep, that so was a good uh, We're going to say that, that you know, well done to the Peter team because they certainly had a fabulous day. You know, but talking about main defender, yeah, you know, and, and, and listening to the speech that you would have heard it to the post race interview, and we all fall, fall foul to it because we quick to write people off, we quick to write horses off, and we quick to, you know, criticize. And Tony said, you know, what a wonderful ride on, on main defender from Calvin Habib, which I agree, I thought it was phenomenal. Even if he'd run second, in my opinion, it still would have been wonderful. People say, oh, you said it was a wonderful ride because it won. Not, my, not, not, not through my eyes. Um, and he said in the speech, he said, everybody wanted to hang him and, and throw him out to the dogs, you know, and, and get yeah. rid of him and get him off the horse, etc." And he said, no, no, no. And then Calvin went on and said, you know, I had to redeem myself. Yeah. And it just ended so well. But yeah. yes, I thought he, he won yeah. ultra impressive. Yeah, very impressive. You know, that's, it's probably not a, a, a traditional three-year-old race. And no, yes. uh, he went against some hard-knocking horses. Yeah. And he, yeah. Yeah. No, he won very impressively. Absolutely. Yeah, the Princess Color, she would, she's off to... Was Princess Keller off to the yeah. state? Yeah, there was an article on Sporting Per Hug. I mean, again, what are two for two? These are, you know, those yeah. are once in a lifetime horses, yeah. Princess Keller. She's uh, trained Captain's on well. Ransom and those. She has yeah. trained on well. Yeah. Very well. Uh, yeah. Sean Terry has a way of, of keeping horses on the boil. Yeah. yeah, she's a. Got a lot of older horses. And in sync with many trainers. And the versatility. She's gone from six furlongs to, yeah. I think she ran second in the Will Lavington as a, yeah. as a three year old. Um, so she's, but she's off. She's off overseas. Uh, the states. The, the, the three that we know of: Princess Kala, uh, Isi Vungu Vungu, and uh, what's the third one? Make oh, it oh, snappy. Make it snappy. Make it snappy. And I believe there's there's a few others. And and, and Lance uh, from Sporting Post is going to release the list for the public to enjoy a bit later on. But I mean that's a that's a wonderful achievement to do. And and so it's about the only way we can get out of the country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's nice that the states have taken it for two months. Yeah. Uh, hope it all works out. In Mauritius yeah. five months in the UK. Uh, yeah. Really goodbye. But then the horse is so flat, it doesn't know where yeah. it is. Uh, yeah. Oh, let's hold thumbs for Hollywood and hopefully it comes off. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, as you quite rightly said, and it's a fair question, you know, 
if we're able to get horses over there, are they going to be good enough? Well, the only way we're going to know is to race and, and find out. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, some of them have gone over there and excelled. Some haven't. Uh, that's just the na na name of the game. But we wish everybody uh, with these traveling horses that have given us in South Africa more you know, rejuvenation and more interest to follow internationally. So uh, let's hope that. I believe there was a bit of a problem on the aeroplane. They had to stop off in... Bahamas or somewhere for the technical issue. But I believe they're well on their way and may have even arrived by now. Sorry, you were saying I interrupted you. No, nothing. I said, well, why we haven't exported through America before? I'm what not, if we do two months in, in the States that we can fly to Dubai? I'm not sure the whole protocol situation yeah, is seems to be why well, have spent all this time being with yeah. yes. the Goalposts seem to move up. every year, yeah, month. I think, I think the horses have got a lot of... Look, I can put your arms up for that. They're like, put the brakes in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, steal their market, just <laughs> yeah. but, uh, Because, yeah, the South African... We were we'll talk just now about uh, the South African product. If, when you look at this catalogue, oh, we'll talk about it just now. Um, you were mentioning that uh, Cheltenham starting, and, and Hollywood's got an interest there too. Yeah, Cheltenham, um, Hollywood, and, and, and the kids with it's, it's Bon, I don't know how to pronounce it, it's an Irish man, Bon, 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 uh, I believe uh, that the uh, Hollywood Bets Durban July theme will be released, I think, on the 14th or 15th, mid of this month. And uh, I have absolutely no idea what the theme is because obviously everybody signs confidentiality clauses for obvious reasons. But uh, I do know that it's a wonderful theme. That's all I know. So um, we look forward to the release. Yeah. I say uh, why I know that is because the person I was chatting to said, uh, oh, as we signed a confidentiality clause, you'll have to wait in line. Is that Ken? But what we can tell you is that it's a wonderful theme. Yeah. And if uh, Hollywood and Gold Circle have got anything to do with it, no doubt it'll be a wonderful theme. Let's um, move on. Soccer. You, you watch a bit of soccer because Andrew and I always talk about soccer, betting, punt on the soccer. Well, if you work for left, you must have worked. Yeah, so. uh, but uh, we can never really advise the public on which teams to back. I mean, you're a soccer fan. Soccer, Man United, but... Oof. Let's talk well, about them. Right <laughs> what happened? You, you insulted I said them. They're that are useless. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're really struggling at the City moment. City kicked their backs out. Yeah. That's what you I think it's a big game this weekend. Uh, City, Liverpool. Okay. So, yeah, be interesting there. Um, there's also, we're talking about podcasts. Um, I've also been watching because there's enough uh, cake for everybody. Um, Joe DeMarta from Glistian is also, they do an electronic uh, podcast and uh, with Pierre Stratum and that's also been some interesting, uh, you know, Joe watches and enjoys our podcast and, and so do we his. Um, and and uh, he had an interesting chat with uh, Barsi Filioni, he had an interesting chat with Pierre Stratum, he had an interesting chat with uh, a whole host of people, you know, international people as well. And uh, that's a bit of news. Try and go on and watch that podcast too. Any information and, and show and, and talk show you can get about horse racing, the better. Um, so that's the soccer. Richard Ferry, you know, some may say, well, you're always beating on his drum. We're always talking about him. Well, he's always in the winner's enclosure. I've seen some phenomenal rides. Uh, Stingray, Fortini Prince Lou, for me, was one of his best. There was that lunar halo, I think, that filly down in Kobeka. How he got that up to win, I don't know. Um, I think, in fact, I want to have a bet. There must be betting out, I'm sure there is betting out, of him to achieve Anthony Delpesh, his goal, and exceed it. I think I'd like to have a bet. I think he will. I think, I think they were averaging like 29 or 30 winners a month they had to do to get that record yes. up until last week or so. so He's probably on track, the amount of winners he's riding just in Durban and, and PE. Yeah. And, uh, if he starts... Uh, he is on track because I'm yeah. turf talk there when uh, he got the free barometer or something like that. Okay. So the barometer now has gone over 336. Yeah. 
I think it's too ahead of Yeah, I think the only concern is with him riding so much, is he going to pick up a suspension and, and yeah, how, yeah. how long is that suspension going to be? Sure, so that sure. could curtail yeah, you good know, points, good 10 points. days. Suddenly that's yeah, yeah. It's important maybe 25 be. winners he loses yeah. out. That's, you know, you're also moving into the KZM Champions. Yeah, a lot of feature yeah, races. Lot of feature races. Uh, and, so that and, and I'm telling you, I won't be so But he might, he might box clever and instead of riding, okay, if there's a dual yeah. meeting on, he might take the easier off. Okay, but he wants to ride group winners, I would would think. Yes, in that yes, position yes. and you want to ride group winners but if you wanted to chase the championship you could duck off to Joburg or something and yeah, take yeah. all the plum rides in Joburg if, yeah, yeah, right, if yeah, you yeah. wanted to do that yeah. but if you want I would say no, I had to laugh at Antony the other day and Hollywood is giving him Hollywood is giving him all the rides to break his record <laughs> but I think you know when, the, when you're riding that well I think the confidence you know yeah. you know you're happy to get a, take a chance and get a horse into the right position and your confidence is up whereas a guy that's maybe not getting as many chances he maybe gets that one standout ride every two weeks yes. you know he's a bit timid with yeah. Richard you know his confidence is sky high he'll do that right he makes the right call in the races now and getting them in the right position so yeah and you can say whether they're false favourites, I don't know, but uh, yeah. he's well, bringing them home. Some of them are probably are false favourites, but what I like about Richard is he rides a bit shorter than other dogs. I mean, a bit longer than Longer, that. Yeah. yeah. And he mentioned that in his interview the other day, actually. Because uh, Dee said to him, um, with Stingray, uh, that, you know, he, to watch it might not look the tardiest. Yeah, not the neatest. The but neatest, he's... but he delivers and gets them home. Yeah, you exactly. Know, uh, as far as I'm concerned, yeah. uh, the, uh, we're not here for a modelling show. Yeah. We had to get horses past the yeah. line first. Oh, been and, he, and he said, he said that, uh, you know, he said it might not be, he said, but I sit longer and I'm able to sort of get more animated. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think a lot of our jobs sit too short. It's my opinion. And if it's taken up in the academy. I laughed uh, because I was thinking when he hit 199, and I know when Hollywood hit you know, one before the big number, you sometimes get a bit stuck. Yeah. And as I was, I went on, to, I was at Gravel, but in my office, and then I walked off the race course after watching a horse run, and they were saying 199. And as I walked to back to my office, I said to myself, please, don't let him get stuck on 199. Yeah, that's the last thing you need yeah. now. It's a bit of a lull, yeah. a quiet patch. Yeah. You know, and, and two races later, bang, the 200, yeah. 201. Yeah, he's got so, a lot of momentum with him at the moment. Yeah, so absolutely. I think, so I'm, I'm glad that he... His agent, I think, is uh, smiling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ken Nicola, he could have picked a better agent. Yeah. Uh, yeah when, when, Ken, when you see Ken, when your phone's ringing, you see Ken, you know you got the, yeah, the right horse. Yes, you've <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, got the right horse, yeah, absolutely. But well done, uh, Richard Ferry. Dutchy, as he is affectionately known from me anyway, and uh, I rem rem reminisced with him yesterday. Uh, when Gary Rich was uh, working at the South African Jockey Academy, and you'll even remember, um, Tyron Langdon mm. was still, you know, sort of having his first 10 or 12 rides. Yeah. Sean Veal, yeah. uh, Richard Faree, and uh, we used to go, I used to go just to accompany them. They would travel to Bloemfontein and, you know, uh, um, 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 Governor, the jockey. Um, Leon. Leon yeah. Governor. Yeah. That, was, that was the era, you know, that was yeah. the year. And there was Richard Free. And I said to him yesterday, I said, remember those Bloemfontein trips? He said, that's what's made us. You know, and, yeah. and, and it's, it's so true. But well done, Richard. And, uh, and that's where you got his nickname, Dutchie Ferry. So well done to you, Richard. We're very proud of you. I talked about the sales. Oh, there's been sales already all over the place. But the catalogue, you know you're getting old when you get excited when the next catalogue gets released. You know, <laughs> you know you're getting old when you, you lie in bed at night and you read the catalogue. I mean, but anyway, it is what it is. Here it is, the National Yearling Sale 2024. Um, the team will just zoom in so that you're able to have a look. And they're giving us the thumbs up. Many farms, I'm not going to name any farm because I don't want to be told I'm biased. But uh, have a look, there are some pedigrees in here. You're going to have to take uh, a big fat checkbook with you and, and well done, fantastic to the breeders. So that's taking place on the 18th and 19th of April. Uh, it's a wonderful sale. There's uh, something there for everybody and it uh, meets everyone's budgets. Sad news, um, Byron, I don't know if you'd remember Tiki Carr. I mean, maybe you'd have read about him and, and I don't know, maybe you came across him. But Tiki Carr sadly passed away this past week and, and he went downhill quite quickly. Yeah, I know, that's, that's, that's a sad thing. Uh, cancer's a bugger. Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, I had the privilege of having him and his wife, Carol, at our home many years ago. And we'd had a lovely party and, and there were other people there. 
Well, I said to you, I mean, I remember Tiki used to grab it and he always used to change the stick up here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and uh, great memories of him. And, and uh, he, we had, had a party and Tiki was the life and soul of the party. Next minute, uh, it went silent. And, you know, 10 minutes into the conversation, we said, where's Tiki? And now Tiki was fast asleep on the couch. <laughs> and just, uh, just great fun and, and a great man. So to Tiki, uh, and Car to Tiki Carr's family and Carol, and your family, uh, our thoughts and prayers are with you. Uh, nice to hear that Clyde Basil's operation uh, seems to have been successful, you know, this most previous uh, operation. So uh, get well and, and uh, get better quickly, Clyde. Uh, we're missing you. And then, of course, Jane Thomas, who we know is uh, doing all her treatments and things. We constantly think of you, Jane, and, and wish, you, um, wish you well. And we mustn't forget Tony Stiebel. Yeah, absolutely. Tony Stiebel passed away. Thank, thank you for reminding no, he me. He was chairman of the Durban Turf Club, wasn't he? One great, great black man. You always just said the Tony Stiebel golf day after the July. I mean, that was, uh, okay. was a great, that was a black a tradition. Yeah. Yeah. He was the chairman when the Queen visited. That's right. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So and he was also instrumental with Dr. Nick Gabbershane putting up the lights. Okay. 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 So to the Stiebel family as well. But uh, yeah, just uh, to everybody that may be fighting uh, cancer or unwell or whatever you, you know, uh, in the box seat podcast. Are, are, and the racing industry are behind you to each and every one of you. Um, Mark, a horse that we didn't talk about, which I think was not, I think we all know was really wow, was give me another. Yeah. That's just quite good. And, and as Mark de Kock said in his interview, the whole family, the grandmother, the, the mother, the, the, the daughter, I mean, what a family. And again, the unpredictable, you know, teach me English. Not unpredictableness. What's when you when you can't predict the future? And predictably. Unpredictably. Standing at Maritzfontein Stud Farm, and there's a beautiful mare in, on the grass, and uh, the farm manager said, "There's another Russia." That is the mare, isn't it? Yeah. Give me another, another yeah. Russia, and beautiful foal, and tickling the foal, and this and that. And I said, "Well, has the foal been given a name yet?" No, no, it hasn't been given a name. I mean, newly born foal, yeah. wobbly legs, because uh, it's so newly born. And uh, there's Mother Russia and, and the baby, you know. And then you fast forward, that yeah. little foal is now unbeaten, group one status, and looks to be a, well, is a champion. I mean, just shows you how you never know what you've got. Yeah, so, she's very good. Yeah, I don't know really, if she's really going to go for the triple tiara. I read I somewhere, think. Byron, I think she's not going for yeah. the triple tiara, but I stand to be corrected. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, which it must have been a bit of a tough decision to make because obviously you want the group ones, yeah. uh, but also it would have been nice for them, because I think it was Summer Pudding that did the triple tiara. Yeah. It would have been nice to have had another horse to, to achieve the triple tiara. So it would have been a tough decision. Nice she, problems to have. Yeah, she <laughs> comes to Durban, unfortunately, the Willavingtons will be against older horses, older fillies. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, she's got a, if she's going to go the July route, she's going to have to bump them at some yes, stage. Yeah, but, uh, the main defender showed that you can go against all the horses. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, we're in for a poof. And every single year, we just how blessed we are. They just keep coming like a conveyor belt of good horses. That's how good our product is. That's how good our product is. Um, quick question to both of you, because you've got more experience than me, um, especially you, because you're older. Um, <laughs> she seemed to have hit a flat spot. In, in the race, and J.P. Finham ever mentioned that, and he said in his interview, I, I may have panicked a little and gave her one or two and got her going, and I would also panic, uh, um, and so it's not a criticism. Uh, a horse that can go well, hit a flat spot, and quicken off a flat spot like that to, to win going away, I mean, it's got to be, I mean, that's got to be a sign of a, I mean, freak horses do that. I yeah. Because some horses hit a flat spot and go out the back door. Yeah, because I think uh, Gavin, I think was he on the stable, mate. He was cruising. He looked yeah. like he had a lot of horse under him. And uh, she was a little bit, like you say, under pressure where she hit that flat spot. And then Gavin's horse seemed to fall out the race. And then she just looked like she was dropped in again at the 200. Yeah, uh, So it's always a good sign of a horse with acceleration that yes, can yes. turn it on like that. It's, that's always helpful. Yeah, that could sort of get themselves out of that bit of, of trouble. trouble. That, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, well done to Mike de Kopp, Jessica Jell, Stephen Jell, Mary Slack, and everybody related to uh, Give Me Another, Volker Borsdorf, Maritz Fontaine. Hugely proud. Uh, One World firing up uh, as, uh, as in the size ranks and uh, all these other new sires that are, are doing so well, but in particular uh, One World. Well done to everyone related to One World. Your surname, is it Foster, F-O-S-T-E-R or V-O-S? 
F, Neither. F, F and with an R. Okay, so it's, so, so it's Foster. Foster. Okay, so not Foster. No, not, Foster. not, like, no, the, not like the jockey also. Similar, okay, yeah, Byron yeah. Foster, but... I mean, I said in our, English in our media yeah. meeting, I said, we've got Byron Foster uh, on our podcast. And they said, oh, isn't he riding overseas anymore? I said, no, no, this is Byron Foster. So, okay, F-A-S-T-E-R, so that's it. Um, talking about uh, passing away, which is not a, a nice subject, I just want to make reference to um, something that was a wonderful story, and I'll share it very quickly. There was a horse that won at uh, Turf and Time. We spoke about Saturday's racing called Judgment Day that was uh, owned by the People's Syndicate, which I am part of, and uh, lovely to have got some new owners involved that never owned a racehorse. But it was bred by the late Murray Hume, who was friends with uh, Bruce LaRue, and, and they bred it together. And this gentleman's dream was to breed a racehorse and uh, he had one mare case stated and and this gray horse that won was his very first horse that he ever bred and uh, i didn't realize you know because that's quite a touching story he passed away a couple of um, a month or so ago so he sadly uh, missed watching his first horse win um, and uh, i just said to bruce we would make mention of that because it was omitted from the interview um, and and it was because of murray hume and his love for the horse that uh, judgment day so i'm sure he would have been watching from up above and syndication proves time and time again it's the way to go um where's the menu where's the menu gone for the uh clubhouse we only got two more points and we're wrapping up here's the menu we've got uh beef macon it's new to our, our menu there's beef macon uh, chicken breakfast sausages uh, waffles um, nuggets and chips and of course cappuccinos and, and a full breakfast menu so there have been a few changes to the menu uh, come up to summerfeld clubhouse um, and and enjoy that next couple of guests well we've got a list lined up like you can't believe um richard Ferry is going to be on our podcast wednesday, wednesday yes uh, time for, has he got time for you guys uh, he said that he flies in on on a wednesday he's normally early at the race course eight o'clock uh, he said we'll do it next wednesday before, long before racing so we look forward to that nikki munchi up in joburg uh, he'll want to be on our podcast bill lambert we're trying to get on so we've got a long list of uh, of very exciting guests not that byron wasn't exciting uh, he's just part of the exciting list himself um and that's the wrap for us um, all we've got to do is say thank you to byron for his time and and uh, yeah to, to you and the whole platinum team um all the best and, and just you know, keep flying that flag high and I'm sure Andre and, and everybody are, are very proud of, of both establishments so well done thank you thank you yeah, thanks for having me <laughs> no, 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 no. very exciting no, <laughs> and, uh, lovely to see Callum Dixon's mom uh, just walk past well, us yes. we were talking about your son on the podcast but we were only speaking good things <laughs> so that's a wrap then from all of us plenty of racing action coming at you as always and uh, I think it's a double header Saturday, double header at Cape Town and Joburg, and then we're at Hollywood Bits Gravel. I was dying to ask you about your runners, but you don't have runners. Day off. Day off. Nothing wrong with that. Everybody deserves a day off. From Andrew Harrison, the whole team behind the scenes, and of course, Byron Forster representing uh, Sabine Platner's racing establishment. Punt well, be nice, and uh, be safe. And as always, we'll see you in the number one box. Remember to subscribe, like, and follow us on the Gallup TV YouTube channel. If you missed last week's episode of In the Box Seat, click right here, and you'll be able to watch it at your leisure.